Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater. And I have a really special guest today, Christina Strassfield, the executive director of South Hampton Arts Center, and my friend. Uh, it's a delight to have you, Christina. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. We go back 29 years. Oh my God. So it's really <laughs> exciting to be here with you as always. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have got a lot of exciting events going on at the Southampton Arts Center, and you have just curated a magnificent show. Look, the look at the book is it called? Look, look at, at the, the book. Look at the book, which I, I wanted to show them real quickly. Absolutely. We have a little. Can we do that? Show that. This is in our gallery for, and that amazing piece in front of you, the large one, is by Donald Lipsky. It is 14 feet tall, wide and tall, and it, it is composed of 500 books that were individually secured onto the wall. Uh, it took the, the installers uh, from 9.30 in the morning till 2.30, from 9.30 in the morning to the next morning at 2.30 in the morning to complete the project. It was just amazing. Uh, when you walk into that room, it's so exciting to see. It really is. It's a beautiful piece. You, you, you blow me away. You, you, you're, Christina, you were just one of the most incredible curators. And how you see it, do you see it all ahead of time? I do. I, you know, with this show, I, I, I had the idea, and I've done other book shows, but I kept seeing other pieces that were very exciting. And I remember kept thinking about them and thinking about them. And then about, I started at Southampton Art Center, and a wonderful artist named Ellen Weiner, who's at the show, came to see me and she said, you know, I'd love to, you know, I'd love, you know, we started talking and I said, you know, I'd love to do a book show. And she said, you should do it. And I said, you know, let me think about it. When she left, I sat down and I immediately wrote down like 15 names of artists that I could include. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Yeah, let me see about doing this. And I went to our program committee and I said, I think I'd like to do this. They said, go for it. And, you know, it came together so beautifully, just the way I had thought of it in my head and putting it together. I in love the that when that kind of thing um, happens. It's magical. So it to tell magical. us a little bit about how what's in it. Well, well, it's an homage to books. It's not the traditional book show where you have an artist who draws and someone who writes. We do have a few of those books, but a lot of them are very different. Sort of this Donald Lipsky piece. The other round piece is another Donald Lipsky. The one in front of it is a book that is made out of a sleeping bag. And those are pages that are sheets that the artist has written on. Uh, there's another one which talks about band books. So there's images that the artist has taken and uh, parts of the book and explaining that this book was banned because of sexuality, uh, because gender identity, uh, because of violence. So all these kind of ideas that are were, were, were playing in my mind, I was like, but books are still important. You know, again, we can have uh, a thumb drive, we can have a Kindle, we can have all of this technology, which technology is fantastic. But what's going to happen when all that technology goes? You're still going to be able to open a book and you're still going to be able to read a book and enjoy the illustrations in the book and, and flip through it. And I'm really a paper person. Oh, I, I love, love my to, books. I love <laughs> to show. read books. I don't like to read a magazine. I like to read a magazine, a newspaper. I like to hold it in my hand. I like to feel it. I love to go to libraries. So it really is a tribute to books in general. And I think all these artists that are part of this show really felt that it was a tribute to them. So again, they've used all different material. They've done it. They have 25 books. artists, right? 25 artists. Artist, yep, installations with actual books. And you, in them. right after she left, you sat down and thought of 15 that you could put. put. <laughs> That's right. So then I found 10 more. And what was special about this was that artists were recommending other artists. Oh. And so there's several artists that I had never met. Um, I saw the work. I, I fell in love with it. I said, yes, please be in the show. And I thought that was really kind of a special part of the show as well. Um, others, you know, really reaching out and including people that I didn't know. So for me, it was a learning experience as well. And did you, do you go to each one of the studios afterwards? I went through a lot of the studios. Some of them, there were some artists that are in Washington and upstate New York that I didn't go to the studio, so I did everything, you know, uh, through digital images and then mm -hmm. talking to them. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of FaceTime, which is really kind of a fun way to do uh, studio visits, which I started doing during uh, COVID, you know. You I, I, I know. I, I started Zooming during COVID, and I found that it was very convenient. Yeah, it works very well. So Absolutely. now this exhibition is going to be up until... This is up until uh, uh, May 3rd. And then you have a new exhibition coming up. Absolutely. A very, very exciting one. Um, in 2019, there was a show called Beyond the Streets. That was before I was at the Southampton Art Center uh, by a curator named Roger Gasme. And he had come in and he was showing 
uh, artists that were sort of street artists and graffiti artists that had worked on paper. Um, and the show was very, very successful. So when I came in, they said, we'd love to do a part two of the show, which they had started talking about with Roger, uh, with paintings. And I said, okay, let's go for it. So we're doing this and this is gonna open May 11th and run through July 20th. And this um, is one of the pieces? This is one of the pieces. And this is by Fab Five Freddy, who's really, really well known. Um, and uh, sort of it's a play on, obviously, Andy Warhol and the Campbell soup cans there. But if you see, it says Da Da Pop, Fabulous Five, Fred is the likes one. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's including his promotion in his own piece there. Um, so we're really kind of exciting about that. We've got some great other artists in that called Crash, Elbardo, Eric Hayes, Futura 2000, and of course, Kenny Sharp. So it's going to be an exciting, exciting show for people. And a little bit different, because I think when we did it, the work on paper, um, that um, it, there's a different sensibility to works on canvas. They're much larger. So I think it's going to have a whole different look inside the building. And I'm really excited about it. And, and how long is that going to be up? And for? that's going to be up till July 20th. And when will the opening be? May 11th. May 11th. It's going to be a great opening. It's going to be lots of all the artists have been invited to come. Uh, we're going to have you know food and wine and lots of fun. Well, that's another opportunity at the Southampton Art Center to have a good time and take <laughs> in some art too. Absolutely. Now, uh, we unfortunately we probably won't air before before this happens. But this weekend you have you you partnered with the. Uh, Festi the East Hampton Film Festival. No, it's Hampton's oh, Doc Hampton, Fest. I'm sorry. Hampton's oh. Doc Fest. And that is going to be a really exciting. We have the, it's called a Doc's Equinox. And um, it's a series on Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, which are all are about um, the ecology. And four last films, year, four, four films. Four films, yes. Last year they did water, and this year they're doing land. Um, and we're really known for our documentary films. Uh, we do documentary film series year round um, and we're also going to be this summer we're going to be starting at the end of June and all the way through August every Sunday night we're going to do outdoor documentary films and have, show the films and then have people either the director or the artist or the panelist or someone who's been involved intimately with the film talk about the film and it's a great experience you oh, bring wow. your blanket you sit outside you oh, can bring fabulous. your dinner have a little wine on the lawn and just you know relax and enjoy I, I love documentary films myself. But anyways, that's this weekend, so, you know, it'll be over by the time this show airs. But <clears throat> you've also started doing staged readings. We um, have. Which got me really excited, too. And you have one by A.R. Gurney, The Dining Room, which is coming up. Uh, what's the date? April 26th, 27th, and 28th. Absolutely. We are so excited. We have um, Michael Disher, when I first started, came over and said, you know, that he had been involved with Center Stage Theater um, and they were interested in doing, using our space. And I said, well, let's go for it because I think theater was one of the things that was message, missing. Um, we're not a formal theater. So stage readings are absolutely perfect for what we're doing. Um, we've had three shows. This is going to be the... We had the Christmas show, we had War of the Worlds, the Christmas show, uh, the Glass Menagerie. So this is the fourth show. And we're so excited. And we're going to bring them back again next year because it's been a wonderful opportunity for the artists, for the community. Uh, people walk out of there and they're so... They're so impressed There's with There's something the about theater oh and, and live and the written word being expressed by people with emotion and feeling. It's, Absolutely. It, it's moving. It makes and, it more moving. And it's not just this, you know, it is a stage reading, but it's not so it's a full production. But I have to tell you, these actors and the way it's being directed, you feel like it's a full play. And you, as you said, being in a live performance, you can't beat that. You know, I love film, but you can't beat a live performance and having that interaction with the actor on stage. Fantastic. It's really very, very, very special. Uh, and um, then we have you have another uh, another film coming up. Uh, Exit through the gift shop. Is Exit, that what's next? Yes, Exit through the gift shop, and that is going to be on uh, we May said May nineteenth. May nineteenth, absolutely. And this is going along with the uh, Beyond Graffiti show. Um, this is a film that was done by Roger. Roger was one of the producers of it, and it's about Bansky. So again, the, the artist who has been going around and creating artwork mysteriously, people don't know who he is. He had the shredded piece that went on auction for thousands and thousands of dollars. That's who Bansky really, is? That's who Bansky is. Because he, I don't know amazing, who he is. Oh, <laughs> to educate me. <laughs> he usually does street art and he um, draws on buildings and they're shadowy figures, but he leaves his mark all over the place and people don't know who he is. So it's really kind of a wonderful sort of avant-garde um, presentation. I love it. I really kind of love it. And the film is a wonderful film. I've seen it. So I'm looking forward to um, really ha having Roger talk about 
his his re relationship to to creating the film, um, the artists, how you elevate street art, how it starts one way, and how then it goes into a gallery and how it goes into museums. So it's a whole other you know mindset. It's fascinating. That's May nineteenth. That's think. May nineteenth. May nineteenth. Yes. That's a, is that a Sunday evening again? That's a Sunday so, evening. So yes. you'll, you'll have documentaries continuing for it's the wonderful. summer. We're so excited. Again, uh, documentaries are, you know, you learn, you're entertained, uh, and you're enlightened. Now, the A.R. Gurney play, The Dining Room, what what drew you to that? But is it... Well, I let Center Stage pick the place. Okay, do they have I a said, reason you know, they like that you. one? Yeah, they can choose what they want. Uh, we go over it. Um, that they So they said, what do you think? And I said, absolutely. I do you know what you know. this is about? This particular the dining place? room is basically, uh, it's taking place in a dining room. And of course, the dining room was the heart of a person's home. People would gather and they'd sit and have a meal together. Now everyone's eating on the run and maybe doesn't have the same experience. But it talks about the interactions among the family members mm -hmm. and you learn about each of the characters in it and sort of what their story is. So it really is a wonderful, wonderful piece. I don't, because it, it's a Gurney play. I love Gurney, but I don't think I've seen this one. I, I do. It's not, not as well known as everyone knows Love Letters, uh -huh. uh, but this, <laughs> <laughs> which has been played forever. Uh, but I, I'm really excited about this one. I really am. Well, cool, cool. And then you're going to, in June, we're going to do, we're going to do yes. something. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. You. And it's you're going to, I'm so excited about I, it. Ditto. Because <laughs> you are a wonderful performer. Um, just, I, I just, I'm in awe of you. You're a writer. You do so many different things. Put this show together. And, um, Tell us a little about True that's going to be I'm in awe of you, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, True is a, um, it's a play by J. Preston Allen. Uh, Robert Morse won a Tony Award doing it. I think it was in the early 80s. Um, and I did it at Players by the Sea almost 10 years ago. So it's fun to kind of revisit it. And uh, and it's, it's what's really interesting about it. It's set in this, I don't know if people are watching Feud, uh, the, the, the series Truman Capote and the yes. Swans, it actually covers this exact same time period when Unanswered Prayers came out in Esquire magazine and he was, all of his friends disowned him mm -hmm. and he's alone in his apartment on Christmas Eve uh, and just doing all kinds of things and he, he breaks the fourth wall and he tries to justify uh, why he did this, that he's an artist. It's a very, it's a very interesting piece. Uh, it's mostly on his own words, too. It's all drawn from his own words, and it's a character study. It's brilliant. So it, it was a pl pleasure to do it. Jay Preston Allen wrote The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, so she's a fabulous writer, okay. and it, it brings that kind of depth to the piece. So wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I look forward to doing it. Thank you for letting me. Oh, I'm excited about it. So how long is the performance? Oh, it's about an hour and 45 minutes with an intermission, actually. Okay. So almost two hours. Uh, what drew you to Truman? Oh, <laughs> I, um, I I read I read Breakfast at Tiffany's when I was twelve years old, in one sitting under the cherry tree in my godmother's backyard. I love that. And I, I love that set. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been in my consciousness ever since. I adored him as a writer, and it's just something I gravitated to. And I, in a lot of ways, I identified with him too. So there's a lot of interesting stuff. But let's go on to you. Okay. We'll, we'll get my well, time. We're going to continue uh, on that one again. I'm, I'm, on June 22nd and June 23rd, it'll be an evening on Saturday and a matinee on Sunday. Check the website, sag.org. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, and then moving on, because our time is going, <laughs> you have your uh, fundraiser gala, Whimsy, is that? Um, yes, is that, uh, we have a wonderful gala, and that's going to be on June 29th. And um, usually it's just a cocktail party, but this year we're getting that Motown band, which is an amazing group who perform Motown music. I and mean, who can stop when you have Motown music playing. So it'll be cocktails and dancing on the lawn and a good time will be had by all because it's really fantastic. Hey, they're wonderful. Th th these, these are shot, this is a picture from last year's. This is actually a picture from our Summerfest Gala. Our Whimsy Gala is the first one that we're doing, uh, which is June 29th, which is a cocktail party. And um, the next one, <laughs> sorry, uh, the next slide is our Summerfest Gala, which is on August 17th. And here who you see is Ariana DeBose, who was the Academy Award winner for West Side Story and 
Jessica Vosk, who was uh, Tony nominated for Wicked, and our award winner was Simone Levinson last year, who was the co-chair of the board. So this year, we're again going to have some really wonderful surprise performers. Can't say who it is, but I know that it's, you would love it. You would love him. <laughs> you, 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 you know who's coming and you're not sharing it? You can't share that yet, <laughs> no. but some amazing performers. And again, we're going to be uh, honoring Jamie and Peter Gregory. Um, and so we're really excited. Uh, last year, we had 400 and... 50 some odd people, fantastic dancing to late and music playing and just really a magical evening under the stars. Is it to wait? That's what's the date? That is going to be August 17th. Saturday, August, August 17th. 17th. That's, the, that's the big summer gala at Southampton Art Center. Uh, so get, get your tickets and go to their website and check it out. But let's go back to this other one that's happening too. Uh, the, the, What's it called? The whimsy motion, the Motown magic. Because yeah. we we kind of gave that short shit. So, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. So again, you know, um, we we did the very local hot tub party for a few, a few years, and it was really great. People love it. People love being outside. But we wanted to change it up a little bit. And so, um, someone said, "Well, what about having like dancing?" And so we said, "Okay, great. Well, what kind of music is going to transcend lots of different groups?" And so one of the board members said, well, Motown music. And then, so we started doing a little research and we said, oh, we found this band and they are amazing. You have to really, you can look them up on the website, that Motown band. The music is wonderful. There's 13 pieces. An original singer from the Delphonics wow. will be there as well. Uh, they do the Supremes, the Temptations, you know, Smokey Robinson. You, you name it, and you're really going to you're gonna want to get up there, and you're going to want to move and shake and have a drink and, and nibble on some goodies and, and really celebrate the arts and celebrate the Southampton Art Center. June 29th. Whimsy, Motown magic. That sounds really cool. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> now, now, you know, th th besides all the things that you're doing, you also have started, you have studio drawing workshops that people are really participating in. Oh, year round. It is amazing. Um, Linda Capello is our teacher and it's every Friday from one to three and there's a live model um, and um, Linda goes around and she gives, um, it, uh, she explains how to draw. She really, I, people have started this class who didn't really know how to draw. My, my, my guest just, my guest that was on the show just before you went there and never had never drawn anything before and was so impressed. You, she is the, she's a quintessential teacher. And so again, giving you a little bit of hint, do try this, try that shading. And I, I have to tell you, I've been blown away by seeing what they do. And we have a diehard group that comes every Friday. And have you tried around. yourself? I have not tried myself because usually <laughs> I don't have that time to commit, but I would love to. At some point I will have that extra time that I could sit and do it. But we've had great classes. We've been in a watercolor class with Janet Jennings. Uh, we have just done workshops with Karen Maddox, Barbara Thomas. These are all wonderful artists, but artists who are also great teachers. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you could be a great artist, but it doesn't necessarily make you a great teacher, or you could be a great teacher, it doesn't necessarily make you a great artist. And I think we've been lucky to find the people who have that passion and can do it and can teach it and really inspire people. So, you know, we're, we're doing everything, music, art, a theater, um, you know, readings. Um, and Marjan. And Marjan. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I wasn't free for that day. So I've been, I've been very curious about Marjan myself. I thought it was a wonderful thing to, to, to start up. Mm -hmm. I can't participate, unfortunately. But it's tell us about what you're going to do. We had last year. We had, I think it was twenty, uh, twenty. 20 people, yes, absolutely playing. There's a teacher who goes around, so you could be a beginner, um, and so the beginner's starting a little bit earlier, and then it's a it's a six week session class, and it's, so the it's same just day amazing. every week. Same right? day every week. What day is and, it? And um, you know? that is on Thursdays. Okay. And it's worked out it really start? well. Um, it is starting in July. And I, I mean, anybody you. interested in Marjan, I wish I could go because I really want to. You know, it's, it's a real game of skill because you have to really know and you have to understand the rules. Uh, but people love it. People absolutely love it. And I think once you learn, it's one of those kind of games that you'll play forever and you'll always find someone to play. Whether, wherever you are, people do play Mahjong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a friend that plays it all the time, too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so we still have some time. Is there anything else you want to um, talk about? Let's see. Well, we talked about all these great things. Um, I want to say that the Southampton Art Center, our mission is building community through the arts. And I wanna say that I think we've done a good job. I mean, I've only been there for 14 months, 15 months, um, but I feel that the, you know the mission behind it and the, uh, the desire for the board members who really wanted 
to have this building be used and be, be being used by the community. Um, and that's important. So our grounds are open. We're going to actually open a sculpture show that's going to open on April 25th. And that's going to be exciting with six different sculptures that's being guest curated by Cheryl Sokolow. And um, they're going to be placed around the grounds. So even yeah. when we're closed, you're going to be able to go around the grounds and you're going to be able to look at art. Uh, of course, the original part of the original art, the Caesars that are there have always been there from Samuel Parrish's time 125 years ago, which is exciting. Uh, but you can walk and see those sculptures in comparison to contemporary art, which is going to be all abstract. And I think the grounds are beautiful. You can bring some lunch. There's benches you can sit down on. And we're there for the community. We don't charge admission to the gallery, so you can come anytime. Our what, fees, what are the hours in the uh, We're open right now. We're open Friday, Saturday, and Sundays from noon to 5. Um, then come after 4th of July, for July 1st, we're going to be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 12 to 5. And there's no charge. There's, so there's no, no charge. reason not to see some artwork. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and we will be encourage obviously the people to become members you can get a discount for any of the programs that we do have to charge for but we are there What's for membership everyone. cost the membership starts at $55 oh. so it's really minimal and again that savers. really allows us to be able to offer so much for free for, to so many people yeah but if you so, want to participate in a lot of things it's a savings oh absolutely it's wonderful it's great we are we are there for everyone um and you know if there are people who can't afford the classes or things like that you know we have some scholarship money that we try to make available to help people out. You know, mm -hmm. We feel that that's an important part yeah. of what we do for the community and our collaborations with all the different other institutions, You know, whether it's you know Jazz Fest or whether Hampton's Dock Fest or the South Af Southampton African American Museum or Moss House. You know, we're involved with all of the nonprofits, you know, parish. We, you know, we're all part of the same team and we all want to work for the community, helping the community. We have a wonderful community out here. We're very lucky. We are. And, uh, but now let's let's get your look at the book is up until May fourth. Is 4th. that right? Absolutely. Uh, I I haven't seen it yet. You the must pictures come. blew me away, and I've seen every other show you've curated. <laughs> so I will see this one. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. And, and again, I encourage people to come. There's I'm, a lot I'm, of wonderful programming that's going along with it. There's some lectures. There's some films. You know, just check our we website. Go to the Sa 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 Southampton Art Center. Org. Southampton Art Center org. Everything, there's a, their whole schedule is there. You can find all kinds of things to do. And uh, it's really exciting to have you running the place there in Southampton <laughs> Art Center. Well, I'm very excited. It's been a wonderful opportunity. And um, it's been, I live in Southampton, so it's been kind of fun. I'm now two and a half miles from work. Did you uh, live there before? Right? Yeah, I've lived there for. So you had to years. commute before. I had to commute the 13 so miles. Now, oh wow! So now you don't have to. No, oh, and that's a, that's a lot to do in the summer. In the summertime, it absolutely work. is. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's well, magical. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's been wonderful. Really wonderful. Thank you again for coming. It's my pleasure to have you. Always, always, my friend. <laughs>